what would you say is the the secret sauce to having a successful restaurant institution like yourselves? I mean, because it's not a lot. Most restaurants fail. I mean, obviously, yeah, you know that most to. restaurants, when you start them up, they fail. There's a lot of overhead costs. There's a lot of um, red tape and government. There's a lot of, you know, there's difficulties finding staff. What would you say is, you know, reason number one why you guys are successful? I want to let Alex go first because I want to know his secret. Sure. He's so successful. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, I think everybody has to care. Like one you have to care about what you're doing, about like showing people a good time, uh, about being grateful for every person that walks through the door. For like the product itself, like we're we're lucky. My brother makes great food, and and we kind of have like a an idea that we came out with uh, when we started, and we we stick to that. Like I think that that's important, and I I see that at the same thing at your place, like. Mm-hmm you you know what you're gonna get you know mm-hmm. when, when when you go there and and i could see like uh, theo's uh, dishes and and i mean it's tricky i think about it often when i see like uh, some other places that uh, that struggle and uh, and everything i think th- it's a mix of like caring hard work having a, a great product all of that together but i think uh, really uh, caring and showing people that like you 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 give a shit about them coming to your place you know like sometimes you go to places that are uh, that are popular that are cool and and i hate it when i go somewhere and i feel like uh, they're doing me a favor like serving yeah me, you know what i mean and, well said um, <clears throat> i think another thing that you guys do really well is you are you and your team are unapologetically yourselves and as soon as you walk into the place at satay brothers you're just yourself you care mm-hmm. but I feel like that's your personality as soon as you walk through mm-hmm. the door. Like you greet everyone. Hey, man, how you doing? Let's get a shot. What do you want to drink? Let's get some shots. We'll get you some food. No problem. I'll send you some stuff. It's it's mm-hmm. it's nice and it's genuine. Yeah, I think that's kind of like the, the way that things developed in our, our place and everything kind of happens like organically. Uh, yeah, very. And yeah, I guess we <laughs> everybody that works with us has like a great time, yeah. I think, working. And I think everybody genuinely like is concerned about the customer having a better time than them because i tell i tell the guys like every meeting that we have i'm like it's a fine line between like us having fun working together and customers being like it's a really cool place the Mm -hmm. food is great Uh, my food came out fast the drinks are good the drinks are strong uh we're having maybe a drink with uh, some of the staff uh or like coming there and being like Staff's drinking alone mm. and they're having too much fun and yeah. somebody forgot my plate and these yeah. guys are fucking that's no, that's, that's, yeah. I, that's you interesting. Know? It's, I, that's such interesting, a fine Alex, because yeah. it's true. Because Curtis, you make a great point. That's what I think <clears throat> makes Sate so special is that you feel the it's the energy in that room. And, yeah. I mean, the food is phenomenal. Yes, but it's such a total package. You yeah. have the vibe. You know, even when they're they're at capacity and they have to flip their tables, they're having mm. a good time. But it's it's a good point. Cl- New, new clients might not pick up on stuff like that. That yes. it's like, well, they're having too much fun. And so, well, it, it's also a way of contributing to their service, especially yeah. at a place like Saute, especially when everyone is encouraged to put their stamp on it. But it, it's interesting that I've, I've always wondered if that was something that that I have to address. Hundred percent. I'm always concerned thought, about that. I just thought they were natural. <laughs> we'll look like it. I just thought they were naturals. At so it. But yeah, it's a great fine. What line do you say? What do you say though? Like, hey, <clears throat> we can have fun, but not too much fun. Is that what you say to the staff? Just to we can have fun, but the customer has to have twice as much fun. Oh, got it. Nice. And also, Ooh, like, I like that. It's you know, like okay. uh, when your friends come to the restaurant, like John walks in, everybody knows him. Yeah. So. I don't want like somebody feeling left out if he's sitting at a sharing table and a lot of sharing tables are and they're excited to see John and John's day off. Uh, he, he's going to have a couple drinks. They bring him a drink. I'm like, you bring a drink to the other people around also. They're not going to be sitting there like, you know, losers. And uh, this guy comes in with a big mustache and uh, wearing tight pants. And now all of a sudden well, uh, everybody's. Uh, <laughs> they are pretty uh, tight. Yeah. <laughs> I do wear tight pants. <laughs> everybody's uh, around this guy, you know, like I want everybody to, to feel like that's. Everyone's Another, a VIP at such. Yeah, everybody's, you know, yeah. everybody's part of the gang. Uh, and that's what makes it fun is that, like, we have clients that are, like, 80 years old, people that come with their kids, people that drink, people that don't drink, people that come for 
the staff that come for the food, you know, like uh, it's a it, it's having a mix of everybody that makes it fun. If we just catered to like one type of clientele, then you know, his mustache wouldn't seem that big anymore. If everybody comes in with big mustaches, it was the best thing to come out of the pandemic after the vaccine was John Metcalf's mustache. <laughs> oh, That's what they're saying on the block. It's nice and thick. Yeah. It's, it's, it's it's got that gin tint it's to kind the of gin. red. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah red. I, didn't, I didn't realize I had that Do you until brush it? I. Until I uh, until I grew it out, I was like, yeah, you got a bit of the. Do you brush it every you. morning? <laughs> yeah, I do a little finger uh, a finger <laughs> massage, if you will. Uh, but Alice, I think that was a great answer to Curtis's question about what you know. How do you how do you maintain success? And I yeah. and that's why I think Alex and I get along so well. But also why I reach out to Alex a lot if I have questions about business operations. I love to pick his brain. And also why when you reached out to us individually to do this podcast and I heard that you had reached out and I was like you, we should do this together because even though our restaurants are very stylistically different um, whether it's in the food or in the you know the price point the I like to think the values are very similar and it's Alex said it's there's consistency first of all you know you are at a restaurant you have to offer good food and your food needs to be consistently good yes it has to you know neither of us I would say have challenging cuisines which is but they, whatever it, has, it is that you're putting out has to be good. It has to be good time over time. There's got to be a good value to the food. But then from there on out, those values of making every guest feel welcomed and making sure that they only have positives to say, and that is so important. And, I, and, I, and it ties back to what I was saying about, especially Montreal, like this idea of the joie de vivre, that's – to me distinguishes Montreal restaurants from everyone else. It's, it's not just having good food, it's how you're taken care of when you're out. When you go to a, out to a restaurant in Montreal, you're being welcomed into our home and that is our obligation to take care of you and, but to care to take care of you. you know, there's a reason why, you know, and the best for us, the best way to take care of you is you know, a system you know, or, or different protocols in terms of how we reset a table or how we clear a table or how we get the food to the table or how we talk about the menu um you know and, and i think bo both of us operate business that we need to turn our tables you need to have seatings um but you want to you know if, as most restaurants do if, if people don't always love to hear that there is another seating at nine o'clock or at nine thirty on a friday but that's how you stay profitable so you, you offer this entire experience with no one needing to feel rushed not, feeling that nothing is missed, that you've made a connection with your staff <clears throat> or with the employees. Um, and, you know, that's, to me, that's a big thing that that's different from, let's say, if you go to a restaurant in Toronto, Alex kind of says, like, you go to a place and you're kind of doing them a favor. I feel that in Montreal, what sets us apart is, you're, you're, we're, we're, we are so glad to have you here. Mm. That's mm -hmm. how you be successful in hospitality in Montreal. Mm. So you're coming into our home and we are here to take care of you. And if things don't go exactly as you want or there's a mistake, then you know how to overcompensate for it. And that's, I think that's a big thing. It's not just make something right. You make, you make that error into a strength or something memorable. 